Today, I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with Mr. Jack Lifton. How are you today? I'm great, Tracy. How are you? I'd like to start by discussing the breaking news that just came out from Rare Element Resources. I'm very impressed by, by Rare Element Resources' announcement. I really had very little advanced knowledge, and certainly I, I don't know any more details of the process than were revealed in, in the uh, press release. However, I do know all of the people involved, and I can tell you that they are far and away the most professional group of chemical engineer, mining engineers that, that, I, that I know of in, in the space, I, really the most professional. Their, their work was to the point targeted at their deposit and at the customer's they, they have and hope to have. This is a perfect example of how to do something. They are not talking about conquering the world with their great process. They are talking about solving their problem, and I, think, I really think they have. I, I believe we're really at a turning point in America. Additionally, this month, you wrote an excellent piece about how the news with Tantalus and their deal with Shanghai was a real industry and global game changer. Can you tell us what you mean and give us a little bit more of some background on that, please, Jack? Thank you. Yeah, what I mean is that Tantalus accomplished two, uh, reached two goals that the entire industry sh should have uh, been targeting. One is they got a, an actual major vertically integrated rare earth company, Shanghai Resources of China, to commit into a contractual relationship, taking 30% of their output from their Madagascar mine and investing up to 30% of their capital needs for the development of that project. Second, they got Thiessen Krupp Metallurgical, one of the world's great trade metal and commodity trading houses, to do the same, issue a contract, a real contract, not a memorandum of understanding, uh, to take 30% of their output for sale exclusively into the German market. Now, we've been talking about the German market on Investor Intel, and I have to point out to you, Thiessen Group is a member of the Rostov Alliance. Therefore, instead of uh, secondhand, when they go to a meeting of the Rostov Alliance, they sit across from companies like Siemens, Bosch, uh, let's say BASF, and they say to them, we have material for you. And these large corporations, which do not like to deal with mid caps and micro caps, say, okay, well, you're, we're in the same club. Let's have a chat. That is a hell of a advance for, for Tantalus or anybody else who would get such a deal. Now, you notice that Thiessen Krupp has also signed a deal with Rainbow in Africa, indicating they have a very high confidence level that Rainbow will go into production because it costs Thies and Krupp money to do these deals and they don't do them as a waste of time because their major global 1,000 customers are looking for material, not promises. So Tantalus has simply shown us that they are professional, well-managed, and know what they're doing. Well, thank you so much, uh, Jack, for reminding our viewers that Investor Intel is moving into Germany in the middle of August. So yes. uh, we will be talking to you more and more about that because undoubtedly the German audience will love you as much as our American audience does. But I want to ask you one more question. We seem to have lost. Hong Po has gone on a vacation for a month, so we don't really know what's happening with China. We'd love to for you to give us up an update on what's really happening in China at this moment in time. What's happening in their rare earth sector? Thank you. Well, although uh, I suspect the Wall Street Journal hasn't noticed this, China is restructuring its commodity production space, very much so, modernizing it, getting lean and mean. And unlike uh, other countries or other regions where people talk about it and hope they can raise capital and in their centers, uh, the Chinese government, when it gets an idea to do something, just simply does it and let the, let the pieces fall where they may. Uh, China is, is rapidly, rapidly improving its, its commodity production and utilization space and is, is even now a more fierce competitor than it ever has been. That's all you need to know about China. The Chinese are worried about China's future the future of, of, of the growth of the Chinese economy, and in particular, the future of the Communist Party of China, which is the ruling party of China. Therefore, everything they do is not difficult to understand. It is for the good of China. If you see that, 
then it's not hard to understand what they're doing. And keep in mind that they are not worrying, oh, are we going to offend some investors on Bay Street in Toronto? Not at all. They are worried about their own economic growth and the survival of their form of government. This is a big driver for them. And they, they laugh when they read our analyses. Now, I suspect that Hong Po is um, uh, off to the side for some education. That's, that's my theory. And that he'll be back, or it will be back, and, and telling us, again, uh, from the inside what's going on. Remember, Hong Po is telling us what they want us to know. Pay attention because the truth is in there somewhere, as they used to say in the X Factor. The truth is out there. Hong Po is closer to it than anybody we know. Well, thank you so much for this, Jack. And I'm going to ask you, I'm going to squeeze in one more question. The Chinese, of course, are trying to increase their imports. They're decreasing their exports, especially of the permanent magnet materials. Right. Where are they going to find them? Because we're still in that race to produce them here in North America. If I, if I had to guess, I'd say they're going to find them in North America, Africa, in Australia, as well as, as Southeast Asia. They are fierce competitors, and they are out here looking for material. I, I think when they choose a company to work with, that you better pay attention because uh, they have given a lot of thought to, to this. They've wasted a lot of time in the last 10 years playing around. I mean playing around, looking to see what's going on. But their current president, Xi, uh, is telling them we need to go outside of China and find find materials to continue the improvement of our lifestyle. That is not a suggestion. That is So suddenly we're saying, oh my God, all these Chinese companies are talking to all of our, and they are, they're talking to North American companies, we know. And you say, why is that? Because they're supposed to do that. They are coming here, whether we like it or not, and we have to accommodate that. Now, they'll be good customers, but do we really want to become a third world uh, continent where we just supply the, the great manufacturing nations of the East with what they need? Everybody better think about that. Great interview, Jack, as always. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.